Hey everybody, it's Triple L coming in for My Hero Academia Chapter 288. I hope I have everything here. We have notes. We have things to say about the chapter. I will tell you, uh, this is the shortest notes that I've had for the last few weeks. Um, the chapter does have a lot of technically useless pages in terms of something to discuss because a few of the pages were just to set up the setting. Um, so just keep that in mind. That's probably where we're, we're going to be kind of shorter here. Uh, but anyway, let's just get into it. I am expecting less than 30 minutes for the video, though. That That is the message. Anyway, I hope everyone is doing well. I hope everyone's having a great day. I hope everyone is healthy. Uh, let's get into it. So um, the first, we're going to have a general talk first and then a page-by-page uh, -page walkthrough, which will have bigger topics with it. And in terms for the general talk, I want to touch on something from last week, that being the issue with Toga. So if I recall correctly for last week, I feel like I was skeptical. I'm pretty sure I was skeptical about Toga and Ochako actually having a fight here. Um, and my reasoning for it was, of course, because I felt like it was going to be too comp It was going to be too hard. I felt it was going to be too hard to justify Toga coming into a conflict with Ochako because of the situation. Um, it was still unknown where we were with Higanto's location, and it was also just a really hard situation. Um, then we come into this chapter, and what I ultimately take away from this is just I am very happy at how far the author went to justify the Ochako Toga conflict um, and to make it work. Um, seeing how much effort he put in to make this conflict happen uh, made me feel a little bit better about my general um, skepticalness. Although now this is like making me think like, well, in the future, if something is legitimately hard for the author to do, I better not think that's going to stop him. Um, because if he has all the pieces in place, he could very well force whatever situation he wants. Um, and in this case, um, this was nicely done in terms of what he did with Toga. It all begins with just how much well it all it all be really begins with how much effort he had to put in you know the first thing he needed he needed to have skeptic there he needed to have skeptic having a satellite uplink so that he could see it he needed to have mr compressed spotting it he needed to have toga noticing that mr compressed spotted it um he needed to address what was going on with um higanto moving at a fast speed he needed to address what exactly toga was going to do after she leaves higanto he needed to separate toga from the rest of the villains so really um, everything that, for every reason that I thought that this was going to uh, be hard in terms of pulling off, or for every reason I thought it was going to be unlikely that this was going to be pulled off, the author just went in there and he made everything align. So uh, ultimately, big props to him. I think this was overall solid in terms of just the premising here. Uh, again, you know, it, like, it requires a few degrees of serendipity, maybe. Uh, but not as much as Gentle versus Izuku in terms of like how many random events had to come together to make it work. Uh, this wasn't uh, random events in the same sense because Skeptic having a satellite uplink that makes sense with his character and what he's capable of. I mean, he had he had a satellite <laughs> tracking Hawks and all that, right? Um, the biggest thing would have been uh, uh, Mr. Compress. Mr. Compress spotting the two girls. That is actually the biggest degree of serendipity there. And when you only have one degree of serendipity, that ain't that bad. Um, so that's, yeah, I, I think that's that's my ultimate thought on this whole situation with Toga. And we will have a bigger chat about the significance of Toga having this event because there is something worth talking about here. But before that, we're going to do the page by page walkthrough properly. So we begin in page one. So this was probably for me one of the most exciting pages before reading the rest of the chapter. Uh, just because this is, it seems like Best Genius is coming back. Now, you know, I'm going to be apprehensive. I'm going to say like, nah, nah, not yet. Uh, but I'm, I feel like this is like 80% sure. Um, it seems like this is going to be Best Genius, especially when you have the girl saying that the guy, the, whoever's talking is not fully healed. And then you have Viz saying that uh, kindly ensure we arrive within the next five minutes. Um, you know, that kindly ensure, that sounds like a very proper way of saying get us there, um, which makes sense if that's Best Genius. So that's that's pretty cool. Now, um, my conversation with the guys on the live stream, and this includes Nicholas Rivera. So Nick, if you're there, hey, Nick. Um, my conversation, my concerns on the live stream really come down to, you know, is Best Genus going to be, if it is Best Genus, is he going to be the guy that makes a difference in this overall fight? You know, when you, I don't know. I, I, I can't conceptualize that that, very, that easily. Like, I know we're talking about Best Genus can manipulate carbon fiber. When you look at the panel on the ship, that's carbon fiber. Um, we've seen the guy, I, well, I believe we've seen the guy in Vigilantes use a high 
use a really unfair type of fiber before and I'm, I'm pretty sure it's carbon fiber but like the people on the live stream vouch for it so I'm pretty sure it is carbon fiber um, but that's what those reels in the ship probably are you know so when you come down to it is best genus going to be able to hold back Higanto with carbon fiber when Higanto is breaking so many things everything in his path is just falling away um, in front of him will he be able to stop Higanto I don't know um, it really depends on what the author wants to say. Is Higanto going to overcome physical or um, modern science? Is he going to overcome modern manufacturing? Or is he going to fall to it? Now for me, right now, I think one of the best compromises, if this is best genus, and he is coming in with a super hardcore fiber here, one of the best compromises may be um, having Higanto fall due to a um, a combination of the efforts that Momo and her group did and Best Genus last minute save. I feel like that would be a very fair compromise. Um, I think it might be, uh, for me, it'd be easier to sell it, but honestly, if the author just wants to say like, oh yeah, no, Higanto can't break through these particular wires, I'd be fine with that too at that point. I, Whatever, um, if you want to justify that way. Uh, the only thing I am concerned in terms of the physics here is uh, how exactly the wires are going to be anchored because if Higanto gets wrapped up by the wires and they're still in the sky I have no there's no reason to believe that tiny little plane is going to be able to stay up in the sky when Higanto is Higanto um but they're like looking at the plane it also doesn't look like it has hover capabilities unless this is like future tech so this seems to me like this might be fixed somewhere else maybe best genus's quirk will allow him to do proper anchoring uh, well, again, we'll have to see. I think simple things like wrapping Higanto's uh, legs together or wrapping his arms together, anything like that, I think that would be just interesting to see. Um, I really do hope it's Best Genus. And now in terms of if it is Best Genus, as you guys know, I had a lot of projections in terms of like, you know, we could have the scene where Bakugo is in the hospital. You have Hawks there. You have Bakugo calling out Hawks and whatever kind of behavior. I also had like the idea of like maybe Best Genus sacrifice himself for the sake of the whole overall plan. If this is Best Genus and maybe there's more tricks here involved, um, this kind of does change again my perspective on Hawks and it kind of changes a few other things. If it is Best Genus, um, I'm very surprised that we have a more idealistic Hawks coming through. Um, and I am very curious as to how exactly uh, Bakugo's trajectory is going to be affected by this. Now, Best Genus might still die in all of this. That is a legitimate... A lot of heroes are dying. Uh, that might still happen. Um, but this is just very exciting. This is a very exciting event. I want to see more. I hope it's Best Genus because I want to see what's going to happen here. Um, right now, my projections that I had for the future, I'm shelving those. Can't let those things uh, get into my... Can't let them bias me anymore. I want to see what's going to happen. Um, any other things I can say about this whole situation with Best Genus? He's not going to be able to get to back go um, until this is over. So I don't think we're going to see anything there. I know Sarge, if you see them, him in the comments, uh, he mentioned that he's kind of uh, thinking that Bakugo gets his name reveal at this point now. I don't know. I don't know. I, I still think like a Bakugo name reveal might come at the, uh, at the aftermath of the arc. Still feel like it might be when everyone's in the hospital and like maybe back will share with the best genus or something like that. Uh, but we'll have to see. Regardless, I, I when I see this scene, I keep thinking back to like my whole desire of a Deus Ex Machina. And honestly, I would not have expected best genus, if it is best genus, to be a Deus Ex Machina. If the author comes in though and he shows that it's not best genus, that's also a gigantic surprise for me. So regardless of which way we go here, I think I'm going to be pleasantly surprised personally. Um, I'm excited to see exactly how they're going to justify everything that happened though. The whole issue with um, a dead body and all that. I, I am interested to see where we're going to go here and I'm interested to see what exactly the solution is going to be here when it comes to Higanto. I'm really hoping for a compromise because the kids really need a break. Now on page one there was one more thing. Keep in mind what Best Genius is saying about people dying um, because this is this comes up a bit more. The, the rhetoric of people dying or people being in danger of death. It, it pops up at least two more times in the chapter. Um, one thing I will say though is that uh, given the scope of the destruction most likely there's a lot of kids that lost their parents today and there's probably a lot of parents that lost their kids today so you know the author only knows how many kids are going to become avengers beyond this like how many kids are going to be broken because of what the villains have done yeah no like this is a pretty nasty situation there's a lot of victims in this one um there's really no way to justify the villains here 
Uh, not not easily, not when you consider the death toll that's occurring. Uh, we go into page two. So for me, this is a super critical page. Why? Because it tells us Giganto Machia's speed, 100 kilometers per hour. Ah, that, that's great, author. That's great. Thank you for giving me the number. Now, I did some math here, um, which might honestly, it, it might have been a waste of time. Uh, you never do math for manga unless it's Dr. Stone, uh, because otherwise you're, you're going to find nothing but the devil in the details there. But here's the math. So um, he's moving at 100 kilometers per hour. Uh, and the overall travel distance between the two places was, was 80 kilometers. So if we assume that he traveled 80 kilometers, um, well, actually first, let me begin. He's moving at 100 kilometers per hour, which works out to 1.67 kilometers per minute. Um, and when you do for 80 kilometers, that ends up being 48 minutes. Um, and you can do the math as well. It's just some simple ratios. Anyway, if we assume that he was covering 80 kilometers and that he's essentially covered the 80 kilometers, we're looking at 48 minutes. If we're looking at 70 kilometers, let's say he got to cover 70 kilometers, we're looking at 42 minutes. And if you go down to 60, I believe we would be looking at 36. I think it's going down in increments of six. I might be a little bit wrong there, but 42 minutes if 70 kilometers, 48 minutes if 80. So less than an hour, right? That gives us a general time scale though. So that's pretty cool. Now there is more, um, there are more cool details here. Like check this out. Nabato city is the third city to, uh, or it is the third to last of the cities that we got told from chapter 282. So what's actually interesting in that regard is how long exactly it took the heroes to clear two cities. If we assume the order was from least time before impact to more time for, uh, to more time before impact. I also kind of question how close together these cities are. I, I don't know Tokyo. I don't know Japan demographics though, so I can't really say anything. One thing I would definitely say though overall is that it hasn't been more than an hour. This is all happening within an hour. So that's, I think that's a cool detail to have. Other details on page two include hero design. There's a lot of flyers. I'm really curious as to why there were so many flyers still in this area, uh, considering that a bunch of the flyers went the other way. But yeah, um, I like the guy riding on a soda can. 10 out of 10. Cool design. Uh, page 3 is an important page because of what the random hero is saying. So what's important here is that in very quick succession, you have two pages pointing out the immediate danger to the general public's life. The author is probably doing this because he's trying to make it clear that people are dying. Given that we have Toga being so unreasonable in the chapter, he kind of has to start balancing that out. Another thing is that the hero's speech it goes to remind you that you can't generalize all the heroes. The one hero saying that is just pointing out the perspective of a hero that really cares about what he's doing. Now, I do want to say this is... I, I still think this is the commission's fault. Until I know who exactly made this plan, like who concocted this horrible idea, I'm not blaming the heroes for having an incompetent leader because we don't know who the leader is. I don't think I don't think the regular grunt and file heroes had any say in what plan they were a part of, right? Page four, we kind of already touched on this page at the beginning. Page five, uh, Toga asking for her gear was pretty cute. And we confirmed that the kids were part of the um, Stop Higanto operation. Uh, that's probably like the weirdest thing there. Personally, I feel like given how the other kids were removed from the situation, sort of. Actually, no, no. You can justify it. You can justify it. Page six, I think, was a funny page. Okay, page six, I think it was a funny page. Um, and it also kind of makes you see the dysfunction between the villains. We see Toga wanting to ask the kids something, so that was cool. She's self-directed. Then we have Dobby telling uh, Skeptic to hurry and ignore stuff. Uh, Dobby probably wants to see Endeavor. That's what I really take away from that conversation he has. Um, honestly, though, like Dobby not caring, that's pretty on point for Dobby. He's pretty bad at resource management, so he'd be pretty bad at managing relationships with his allies. Uh, final panels, I think, are pretty funny with Spinner's bandana getting in his eyes. Like, that was a 10 out of 10 moment, just to remind us. <laughs> like These guys are, in some ways, sometimes, these guys are clowns. Uh, but not right now because right now they're they're killing people so like this is this is not they're, they're not clowning around um page seven uh now that twice is gone spinner is essentially the heart of the villains i th and he kind of has always been the heart of the villains just he's been that with twice anyway i think it's a cute moment but doing as we please i think that's pretty ridiculous um it's it's pretty ridiculous to say that out loud when you have dobby right there because honestly dobby is most likely to screw over the villains once he gets what he wants like he's he just doesn't care enough such that he could probably he'd probably be okay with friendly fire anyway i'm not going to criticize the horrible parts of this philosophy that spinner said what's more important here is the potential that the author might be setting up in having spinner tell toga to come back to them 
So if Toga goes rogue on a journey of self-discovery, this line here could be really good because it would have been the line that indicates that Toga would be away from them for a particular long period of time. And the longer she is away from them, the more valuable her return to them would be. It could also be a situation of Toga not coming back. But for now, I don't see the author killing Toga. Uh, like, I, I need to wait a few more chapters to see what he wants to do. Heck, maybe next chapter he'll kill her off. I, 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 for now, I don't see it happening. It's just, well, in terms of the odds, I'd say... I'm like 60% sure. That 40% though, I feel like it, it depends on how he's feeling. I don't know what he's planning for Toga. Page eight, it's just a, uh, page 8 was a situation to set up the page just showing us where Ochako is. There's nothing else of value there. Page 9, we have a talk of strategy with people saying run perpendicular. I think that was, that was smart. There's also something else of value. Even though this city is one of the furthest ones away, assuming, um, there are still people in the buildings. Now, this is critical. Remember what Ochako questioned? The presence of heroes. Now, imagine the first hit cities. When you consider that there's still people in the buildings for this city, there's no way around it. Like, people got squished for sure. Uh, rest of the page shows Suyu rescuing some people as another random hero does uh, damage control. Page 10 was super cool. Ochako shows off how good her control on that wire is. So that was really cool. I always love seeing Ochako, well, be effective. Um, also, Suyu wears heels as well. I just, I noticed that on her costume. Anyway, end of the page shows Toga making her move with Takeo. One thing to note is that Ochako here is seeing the danger of Gigantomachia and making the judgment call to still go out and help out, right? Uh, because that's what a hero does. At this point, I do think she has the same energy as the guy that was saying that they have to start laying down their lives to save the people at this point. Uh, page 11 is a little interesting. Uh, Ochako's monologue reminds us what she's aiming for, that is, saving as many people as she can. And later in the chapter, we're reminded of Night Eye's death, so just as the author reminding you what exactly is motivating Ochako forward. Uh, Toga's acting here was also pretty funny, and in this moment, we see Ochako having this face and then reaffirming that she's going to save Takeo. I feel like this panel in particular might be calling back to the lessons that they learned, especially during the provincial license exam. Uh, like... You know, the lessons that we're about as a hero, you know, how do you greet someone that's in distress? Well, you greet them. You got to be a beacon of hope kind of thing. So I, I, I feel like that's I feel that, that that's the kind of energy I felt from that one. I felt like she might have been recalling that little bit of a lesson. Uh, page 12 and 13 is where everything, I think, starts to unravel with um, Toga, with Ochako getting an eyeful of nude Toga. Uh, page 14, it was another setting establishment page. Uh, biggest thing to keep in mind are the sounds that are occurring around the house. Uh, just reminding you that Higanto is near. Uh, page 15 is Toga buying time, rambling in her delusional way while she puts on her clothes. And I don't feel wrong calling it a delusion. I could even call it typical uh, because most of what Toga said we already have a sense for. Um, there's no new information here aside from knowing that she would like to ask Suyu the question too. And I found that funny because just Suyu is just like that little asterisk you add whenever you're talking about Ochako. It's like, oh yeah, Ochako is coming. Oh, and Suyu. Ochako and Suyu, right? Um, it's just kind of funny that that's the kind of energy that Suyu has right now. Uh, page 16 is really where the tragedy with Toga begins to unravel. But it's also a super pretty page. Like props to the author. Anyway, back to the main topic. The question that Toga comes up with is, what do you want to do to me? Which, already pretty suggestive. Fair to say, though, she's asking to see if Ochako wants to kill her. But man, like, one of the problems with Toga's question was going to be how hard she was going to make the situation for Ochako. And look what we get. Page 17. You have Ochako bring some common sense to the situation. So let's break it down. Page 17. Ochako is putting things together. First, I'm going to give Toga credit though. Like Ochako feels Toga might have killed the lady. Given the Kami situation, given that like Toga has drugged people before and hasn't fully killed them, it might be fair to say that Toga doesn't always kill people. Like I don't know about the old lady, it's definitely a concern. Ideally, she's still in the house somewhere and Ochako can save her if she's still alive, but I, I just want to like put that little asterisk there. Um, there's no reason to believe that Toga killed the old lady. She might have incapacitated, but maybe not killed. I, I'm not sure, though. I'm just trying to give uh, Toga a way out here. Anyway, uh, this is the one line that serves to tell you that the chapter was about balancing out the villain's insanity with having Ochako saying, just to ask me a question like that. So thank goodness for Ochako for speaking with a rational, clear head. Toga's immediate response, though, was really telling. Uh, just to. So clearly Toga doesn't enjoy having her biggest concern trivialized. It shows Toga though legitimately doesn't comprehend the situation, but that's honestly not a shocker because Toga's maladaptive. Anyway, the big issue here is ultimately Toga doesn't know how to communicate in a healthy way. Like look what she did. She came out with a knife. 
Like, come on, Toga. Um, that's what's going to get her messed up at the end of the day, though. Even when it's in such a serious scenario, at the end of the day, she can't do anything but act out on the behavior she previously established. In a way, she is like a little bit of a prisoner to her uh, to her habits, but it's, it's just unfortunate to see, right? This is like a little bit of a tragedy occurring. It's just Toga also is so unhinged. I don't personally... I, I don't sympathize too much beyond a certain point. Anyway, uh, Toga... Anyway... Toga actually gets given a lot of leeway by Ochako, but I don't think Toga would have noticed that. It's actually kind of funny. When you have Ochako spelling it out for her that she's busy, it's, it's, Ochako is essentially talking to Toga like Toga's a child, which I think, good move, because in some ways she is. So good on Ochako for telling Toga something that she doesn't want to hear. Now, mind you, the question that Toga has is about where Ochako's line ultimately is when it comes to dealing with villains. And so far, we have a really merciful Ochako, so the question is... Are we about to see Toga push Ochako to the brink here because Toga's about to have a temper tantrum? I don't know. It would suck if that's what we get. Now, if I was to give a projection to this whole situation, I, I don't know. Um, I feel like Ochako will probably survive this pretty well. Maybe Toga gets buried under rubble because Ochako can't save her in time and then we have Toga missing for our time. I'm not too sure what the author wants to do here. So at that point, I want to say, well, you know, let's think like an author real quick. What is the author trying to accomplish in doing this whole thing with Toga and Ochako? My first guess is that he's doing this to give Toga a significant arc. We know that among the villains, Toga is a favorite. We know that from the villain fight arc. And Toga is the person who we know has had rewrites to her future plans um, due to the popularity that the author noticed for her. And that info comes from an author interview, just to let you know. Anyway, um, I also want to show you this panel from chapter 279. So when I saw this panel back then, I noted the significance of the author showing Toga here. So check it out. So this is actually super interesting with Toga. Is she thinking about Izuku or is this signaling that she's going to have some kind of reaction later? Is she going to internalize this somehow? Is she going to try and have like a revenge fit? I don't know. Kind of hard to say. Okay, so thanks, uh, past me. So what's important here is that this particular thing for Toga was most likely planned since like what, two months ago, two, chapter 279. Um, so what that tells us is that this moment here, there's no way around it. It was going to happen. There needed to be a payoff for that scene that the author had set up earlier. So this isn't some kind of random plot development to pad things out. Um, this is something that needs to happen and legitimately has had thought most likely applied to it. So I think considering that prior circumstance, we should be expecting a fundamental change to occur after this with Toga because Toga has just reached a conflict point that is Ochako. So Ochako, I don't think she's going to change too much because right now Ochako is at a moment of self-actualization. She's trying to prove to herself that she can save people. This is what she's trying like, you know, she's adhering to her own personal trajectory right now, right? So she probably isn't, she shouldn't be changing unless something really critical happens. She's more likely to just reaffirm her identity. Ideally, this could also be a great moment for Ochako to show off what she's learned during her recent time doing her um, work study or whatever. Other possible trajectories, uh, you could have Suyu coming in to help. Um, ultimately, I see Ochako surviving this. She's going to be fine. Um, the real question, though, is just how Toga is going to end up after this. I, I hope Toga doesn't die because I think she still has a lot of value now, but she could actually having the issue with all for one. Anyway, that's the end of the chapter. As we go into the future, one of the big things here is that right now we are in a pretty good place with just the tempo of the arc in general. We need to see how Higanto is going to get to Shigaraki because we need to see Shigaraki's retreat, right? That's the big fundamental moment. We need to get to that moment. The big question is, how long is the Toga Ochako stuff going to take? Best case scenario, we say it takes one chapter or two chapters, and then we move back into the overall issue. Maybe the author squishes those two things together and makes them happen in a nice fluid way. That would be ideal as well. I do want to get out of this arc in general. Maybe we're not out of here till chapter 300, though. Any other thing we're saying here? Um, I really cannot under, uh, understate how nice Ochako is in this chapter. You know, she isn't a bombastic character. She's a stable character, right? Like, Ochako, you were great for this chapter. You're, you're coming in here. You're telling the crazy girl, hey, I'm I'm busy. I'm doing work. I'm, I'm trying to be helpful. I just like I, I like what Ochako was about. Not only did she show off her ability with that wire and saving uh, Suyu, she's just being a cool all-around person. Um, yeah, no, I can't. Again, I cannot under 
understate how valuable it is like after weeks of ridiculous unhinged villain propaganda to just have Ochako there just tired just hey get out of my way otherwise I'm going to neutralize you it's just it was great it was great it's just because like you you get you 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 watch the villains just being so so unaware of what they're doing and then you just have wonderful burst of innocence Ochako okay nah Good stuff, good stuff. Guys, let me know what you thought down below, and until uh, next time, I hope you have an absolutely great day.